Welcome to Around the Dog World. 2012 has been a spectacular year in Great Britain. In the year of a golden jubilee, Paralympics and Olympics, the dogs this year have matched up to the rest of 2012 with some standout performances. Today's programme is devoted to taking a look back at the 2012 show season, catching up with the big winners and top dogs, while glancing back at some of the highlights of an exciting season. Today I'm joined by Dog World's consultant editor Andrew Brace and back by popular demand Di Johnson, our guest commentator, to give us some of their expert analysis and opinions. Now, Andrew and Di, there have been some quality dogs this year. Any that have taken your eye in particular? Ladies first. Well, nobody will ever take anything away from Jilly. She's the star, she stormed the show ring. We all love her. I have a soft spot for that little toy poodle, Graham. I think he was special all year. He just did it for me. He had an excitement. Um, I wanted him to win. Di mentioned excitement, and, and I have to say, when, when Jilly has a really good day, um, for me, it's it's very hard to see greater excitement than that. When she goes around the ring, she has the most incredible carriage and profile movement. Jilly on a good day is very, very tough to get by. She excites me. I have to say, it's a breed that usually moves well, but Jilly has that something extra, that that joy of the show ring. I think she's always got that little bit of naughtiness in her. Yes, right? I do. Well, that would appeal mm. to you too. Yeah, mm. perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we will come back to you guys in a couple of minutes and take a look at this year's top dogs across each group. But first, a quick overview of the past year and make sure we get a glance of every Best in Show winner through 2012. I think you'll agree that that is a fantastic list of dogs taking top honours this year. But before we take a look at this year's top dogs, here's a quick glance back at our top dog winners from last year.
So, Andrew and I, this year's winners had a lot to live up to. They certainly did, uh, and I think they've done so admirably. We've seen some wonderful dogs through the season regularly appearing in the group and best in show ring. And uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a strong field, wouldn't you say, though? Absolutely. But then it always is, Andrew. Not always British dogs. Sometimes dogs that have come in from abroad and are shown here, and often going back to our dogs, British dogs, in their pedigrees. I don't remember a year that we've looked round and thought, well, really, it was a rubbish lot of dogs. No. There are always good dogs. Right, well, let's get started with our working group winner, a dog that we saw winning best in show at Darlington this year, the Bouvier de Flandre, champion I'm special, in essence, Movado at Canix. And Di, have your thoughts on Mo? Yeah, I have. I think Mo is an exceptional dog. Very well named, wasn't he? He is special mm -hmm. and he is essence of Bouvier. Mm -hmm. He has all the forbidding expression and the, 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 the characteristics the breed calls for. He has the advantage of a terrific handler. I don't know anyone else that could have matched the masculinity of this dog. Dave Killerley was exceptional with this dog. He deserved all his wins. The movement was tremendous. To win under Liz Cartledge in a good entry is no mean feat. Um, this, this dog is special. Well and named. And he's a bit of a handful, isn't he? Oh. Yeah, yeah, you said. He would quite like to have a little fluffy to play with. <laughs> like a Pekingese. <Pekinese, laughs> <yeah. laughs> but Dave has that control. Yes. <coughs> now, Andrew, it was actually quite an achievement for Mo to come out top working dog because he's actually a docked dog. Yeah. Um, for the benefit of the viewers who don't understand the rather strange situation, at a dog show where the public have to pay admittance, Dogs that have had their tails docked, albeit legally, are not allowed to be shown. Now, please don't ask me to explain why, because I can't. But that is the law of the land and that is the situation. So consequently, this rather outstanding Bouvier has obviously uh, come up against shows, Crufts being one of them, where he can't be shown. So, Di, what is a judge looking for in a good Bouvier? Well, the judge has studied the breed standard, so he knows exactly what, what is demanded. Um, but he's looking for basic make, confirmation, breed type. Um, essence of Bouvier is this forbidding expression. Um, he is essence of Bouvier. Because he is docked, he does present a balanced outline. Um, and he, he does have that forbidding expression. Nowadays, with this plume waving about, they've rather lost, for me, that masculinity and, and um, excitement of, of a really um, male dog. He's just terrific on the move. Any judge is going to take that into account. So now that was our group winner, but have there been any other dogs that have impressed you in this group? Yeah, the, the working group is, is usually pretty strong. You know, box, there's usually a couple of decent boxers knocking around. Earlier in the year, um, I, ju I judged the working group at... Um, at Birmingham National, where my winner was a Newfoundland dog who I'd never set eyes on before. And, and he, that day, he really did impress me enormously. He was a dog called Champion Sandbear's Stride and Style. And um, he actually went on to win Best in Show at the National under Robin Searle. Uh, interestingly, I, I met him again in October when I had him in the breed. And uh, he won the challenge certificate. I, I considered him to be the best male on the day. But when it came to the breed, I was just blown away by um, a middle-class brown bitch who just had the edge on condition and performance on the day. And, you know, judging dogs is all about doing it cold, doing it on the day. And uh, as it happens, the, the lady on my right was actually glued to the Newfoundland ring all day. And actually, I think she agreed with me. Absolutely. All day. <laughs> That's worrying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Di, were there any that caught your eye in the working group? Yes, always are, because I like the working group. But I do think Sue Ellis deserves a mention um, with her Malamutes, because I understand, I may be wrong, she has now won Best in Show three times at Bournemouth Championship Show. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, she constantly, she consistently, yeah, <laughs> consistently fields a good team. And can, should we not mention Tan? I mean, those St. Bernard's, and it isn't just one. I think he's got four on the show circuit, all moving well, all typey, brilliantly presented. It's not an easy group anymore. No, but, but Tan Negretto, who Di's just mentioned, has, has done an amazing job with this breed. He's a young guy, he's a very gifted handler, wonderful groomer. But Di mentioned the, the consistency of the dogs that, um, 
this guy has in the ring. And it, it, it's so amusing because they are consistent. And he, you know, he sort of chops and changes of what goes to this show and what goes to that show. So he's got like four dogs out at the same time, all of which are you know, getting a sniff at groups. And the people around the ring say, I don't really know which is which, <laughs> including some of the judges. Ah. We shall move on to the pastoral group. But before we talk about the winner, um, this group in particular actually was quite wide open this year compared with last year where I think it went right to yeah. LKA, the last championship show of the season where yeah. we had a, a Border Collie, a Sheltie, and, and a corgi actually in the running. But then there was a nice Samoyed this year that caught your eye, Di. Yes, there's a bitch, a Samoyed bitch called Hermione who catches my eye all the time. She teams with quality, she never stands wrong. I think she's getting on. I think she's six or seven, almost a veteran. But that's a bitch I would never overlook. She seems to have been around forever. And it only seems like yesterday I had her in the, in the junior stakes yeah. at Bath. Yeah. She was my pet plant yeah. qualifier at Bath. Yeah. And there is something about Samoyed bitch puppies. Yeah, there they, is. They all yes. look adorable. adorable. But mm. she was adorable mm. plus. Mm. And of course, you know, I, I've, I've you know, watched her go on ever since. Um, didn't she end up with reserve best in show at Crofts? Yes, yes. she did. Yes. Behind, yes. behind Philly. Yes, no, and that's what there. three or four years ago. Mm. Yeah, and she's kept that that quality through and that um, love of the show yeah. ring. But no, you're right. It's been a very open group. I think of all the groups, you know, the top awards have been very much spread out. But we were talking earlier about consistent kennels, um, and in the pastoral group, you have a very consistent kennel, and that's the Polish Lowland Sheepdog. And I'm talking about the My Beards kennel of of Di Motrum. Mm. I think her daughter is now involved with the kennel too. Um, they won the pastoral group under me two years ago at Blackpool. And then this year, um, they've won another pastoral group with another bitch, which is, is no mean achievement in mm. a breed like mm. that, is it, Doug? Mm. Good breeder. I bet she believes in line breeding. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sure. They're not an exciting, eye-catching breed, really, are they? Yeah. They're a very honest, basic little breed. But really, Di Mottram and her daughter, I'm glad her daughter's joined her. I always like the generations coming on. Consistently good type. That won the group under Valfoss. Well-deserved, I thought. Yeah, yeah, it the, the city, was it? Yes, oh, it didn't was. it do well under Stuart Mallard somewhere? Very probably. Yeah. But Valfoss, funnily enough, mentioned in her interview after or post that group mm. where that my beard topped the group, um, that yeah, it's, it's not an eye-catching breed, mm. but it caught her eye on the mm. day. Yeah, but dogs don't need to be eye-catching. Dogs need to be correct for the breed. And when they are, then they are appreciated by people who know what they're doing. So this year's top pastoral is champion Allmark Fifth Avenue, the Australian Shepherd. She's a young dog and has had a great year that really took off with an emotional first group win at Welks back in April. Di, can you explain a bit further? Why was that so mm. emotional for her? Yeah, it was difficult for Angie. She'd lost her mum a short time before. Um, and credit to her that she still um, piloted her bitch as capably as she always does. And um, the, the thrill of feeling, you'd almost feel you've done it for your mum as well, it was emotive for her and for us. And she's, I suppose we were talking about um, the My Beard Polish Lowlands being not necessarily an eye-catching breed. Well, the Australian Shepherd possibly is. Oh, it sure is. I remember when they first brought them in and we went to, my husband and I went down to the meeting where they introduced the breed to us and you could see they were going to take off, much like the American Cocker. When well, they... it's, it's one of those breeds. Funny enough, I was talking to Carrie Yarvin just mm. the other week and he said, what is it about Australian Shepherds, whether they're good, bad or indifferent, they end up winning the group placing because they yeah. automatically yeah. have this sort of flashy quality yeah. and most of them are pretty good on the go around. Yeah. Mm. They command attention. Yeah, they have a sort of presence about them somehow. Well, we caught up with Angie Allen to talk about Tiff's fantastic year. Angie, we've watched Tiff blossom this year from Welks onwards. Is that Welks she won her first group? Talk us through the year, how has it been for you? Just an absolute fabulous year, unbelievable year. It's not just Tiffany, but it's all the Allmarks. We've now got nine different Allmark uh, dogs on tickets, and Tiffany's year has just been absolutely one of those you have to pinch yourself just to make sure that it's real. And today at LKA has been a great day for you as well. 
Yes, we were presented with the champagne for the breeder stakes. Um, we're now on 78 points and just got some more. We've now got a new little star, all marked Maserati at uh, Mitsu. That's just got his first CC at 10 months old. And Tiffany's just now taken uh, 14th CC and best of breed. And so just to finish the year off like this, it's just absolutely fab. And we've got such a great backing as well with all the all marked gang. Fantastic. And she's still very young. So what more is to come? Well, she was two on Bonfire Night, and that's when she got best in show at Working and Pastoral Breeds of Scotland. And so, who knows? Who knows? Well, congratulations for Top Pastoral of 2012. You've got the party going behind you, so congratulations. Our next group winner is the dog to have come out on top of the most competitive group of all in 2012. The toy group in 2012 has seen two best in show winners and ended the year with six dogs in the top 16. Just goes to show, Andrew, the, the depth of quality. Well, you see, the toy group has, has always, um, in, in living memory, been a strong group because it's a combination of all the other groups, miniature examples of all the other groups. And although the toys are primarily bred to be amusing, good-looking companions, um, it, it's amazing that you know when you watch the toy group being judged at championship shows nine times out of ten you will probably see dogs moving more soundly in the toy group than you will in for example the gun dog group um, there are lots of really well constructed good tempered little toy dogs around and the results that you've just mentioned prove it but the dog that topped them all had eight group wins and six other group placings, but strangely somewhat no group twos. Nevertheless, our top toy for 2012 was the Pekingese champion Yaki Uar Cantona. He has had a superb year on the back of a 2011 that saw him finish last year a single point outside our top ten. Hey, and you know what, Andrew? What is it with the name Eric? Because the Bichon last year was called Eric, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. No, Bring great. me sunshine. Do you remember that Harlequin Great Dan I bred and called Eric and it was a total flop? Never got it in the mm. showroom at all. Things have obviously changed. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> did I interrupt? Not at all. <laughs> Heaven forbid. <laughs> Eric, yes. Who are Cantona? Um, yeah, I mean, Bert and Philip have, have bred so many wonderful champion Pekingese. They've had Dog of the Year previously. They've won Best in Show at Crufts. Uh, they've had Dog of the Year in the United States. I mean, the, the, they, they are one of the stellar kennels in this country in, in an extremely difficult breed and a breed that has had its problems to deal with this year because it's one of the, the breeds that were deemed to be high profile by the Kennel Club. Anyhow, Eric, I think at the last count, has been deemed fit enough 16 times. So clearly he must be the fittest dog in England, I would imagine. <laughs> Um, anyhow, and every time he comes in the group and he trucks around and actually I, I think he could do it without Bert. A real showman. Oh, he's, he's, yeah, he's a great moving little dog and, and he's, he's one under people that, um, you know, you would not expect to be great aficionados of Pekingese. And those that are, that lead one a group under Geoffrey Davis, a doyen of Pekingese. Exactly. Can you have a male doll, yeah? No, I shouldn't think you can. <laughs> <laughs> well, we spoke to Eric's owner and breeders, Philip Martin and Bert Easton, about the year that has put Eric fifth top dog of all breeds. Bert and Philip, we've seen Eric in the group ring all year long. How, how does it feel at the end of the year to have achieved so much success? Oh, it's a wonderful feeling having this dog won so many prizes all year round, especially this year and last year. And it's so good for Pekingese as a breed and just to show but the high profile breeds are a very healthy breed. You mentioned high profile breed there, but I mean, Eric has won two best in shows, groups. He must be about the most vet check dog in the country. Well, this year he's been checked 16 times, but it doesn't mean Pekingese are a healthy breed if you just check one breed, uh, one dog. But it demonstrates that, that Eric is, is himself and that you breed healthy dogs. He's a very healthy dog, and Pekingese have been around 2,000 years, so we hope for another 2,000 years of healthy Pekingese. Perhaps not 2,000 years, but just thinking a year ahead, I mean, he's had so much success. Plans for 2013? Well, we hope to show him again next year. And he's just a young dog. 
So no plans for retirement yet? There's no plans for this dog to retire because he's still very young. He's not three years old. He's a very healthy dog and I think he's doing a lot for the breed and as I said before, the high profile breeds to keep a high profile breed in the, in the, the view of the public. So there's a couple of toy dogs that we should mention that finished in the top ten. There's a smooth-coated Chihuahua that uh, won Best in Show at Border Union. Yeah, right? that was Copy Me a Celebration. Bill Brown Cole judged at uh, Border Union. Yeah, I mean the, you know, when you get a really good smooth coat Chihuahua, you know, they're such a wonderful breed, and so much of breed type comes from that enthusiasm they're busy little dogs they're extroverts you know and they have a way of moving and that gorgeous thick furry tail you know with the rounded skull and the big ears but they're busy energetic little dogs they're 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 actually big dogs in tiny frames and this celebration i think she's um you know, she's, she seems to place every time she, she walks into a group. And another dog with a lot of charisma is this King Charles, champion yes. maybe Theo. Yes. Um, the, uh, the great thing about this dog is that he is such a good mover. Charlies are a head breed. Years ago, when I first gave tickets in Charlies, the old ladies didn't want to put them on the floor. It's a head breed. You judge them up here, dear. You had to say, but I must see. Now, this dog is a mover. He's a proper dog. He has the breed attributes, but he also has the ability to move. He's, um, he's, he's, he's changed a lot of people's opinion, I think, on the King Charles. I think he's, um, he's done very well. He's done a lot, of good, mm. a lot of good PR for the Yes, breed. I think he has. And now we come to a dog that Di has a soft spot for. A dog that has finished 2012 fourth top dog all breeds, champion Ragus Merry Gentleman, a Norwich Terrier. Yeah, I do have a soft spot for him. When you spot a dog at his first ever show and think he's something special and then watch all year when he wins under people you respect, people like Peter Green, um, I just think he's a great little dog. I've known Leslie Crawley since she was a child. I was friendly with her mother, who was a great doyen of the terrier um, breed, a, a, a positive tyrant. And that's how she described to me a Norwich Terrier should be. I think he's a great little dog, and I think he's one under very knowledgeable people. And of course, his name was Champion Ragus Merry Gentleman. Yeah. But he's called Paris, which kind yeah, of I don't know it. why. I've never asked Leslie that. <laughs> but for those who wonder about Ragus, you know, it's sugar spelt backwards. Ah, right. Mine of useless information. I thought it was just the bolognese sauce. But <laughs> yeah, that's, that's ragu. I think that's ragu. Oh, right. <laughs> <Minus PS. laughs> well, we spoke to one of Paris's owners, Leslie Crawley, about the phenomenal year they have had. Leslie, well, Paris started the year really well, taking the groups at both Boston and Crufts, so two out of the three early group wins. Did you expect then to have the kind of year that you've turned out to have? No, not really, um, it, because it has been a fantastic year. Um, but of course, um, it was just so astounding to me that we won the Terry Group at Crufts. So, you know, that was the most wonderful win. I, I suppose Terry Group at Crufts must be a dream, really. Um, yes, I mean, I have done it before. Um, but um, everybody would like to do that at Crufts, so I'm sure. It's, it's the big one. Paris turned two on Christmas Day, so still a young dog. What plans for 2013? Um, well, I don't have m many plans for him in 2013 because um, uh, I will only take him, except for Crufts, I will only take him to shows where I don't have CCs on offer. Um, mainly because I don't want to stop other young males who are very good in my breed at the moment from winning. So he may go to some champion stakes and into things like that, but I don't have big plans for him otherwise. Well, all it really means to say is congratulations on, on Top Terrier 2012. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was a lovely win. Now again, Andrew, this has been a pretty competitive group. Uh, we've seen about three Terrier breeds actually make it into the top 11 this year. Oh. Well, as I pointed out when we did this programme last year, the Terrier group, the most British of all groups, a very basic group because you don't have a lot of dogs in there with anything that is perceived to be exaggeration. Um, but despite their basic qualities, it's a group which lends itself to very sophisticated presentation. And we still have a lot of very good presenters in this country. So, uh, yeah, we've already discussed the, the very successful Norwich. 
Um, and then you've got um, an Irish terrier, Bitch, who's actually imported from the United States, who took over basically in the breed from um, a male that was imported from the same kennel in America. Um, the bitch is called Fleet Street Fire and Ice. Um, and then you've, you've got another great personal favourite of mine, that's the Scotty Bitch, champion Stuane Florette, um, who won the group under me at Blackpool two years ago. Um, you know, it, it's only now she's really approaching full maturity, but she's well up there in, I think, the 20s with the CCs that she's won. And, you know, we spoke earlier about generations and mentors. Yes, yeah. Stuart Plain, you know, wh one of our cleverest people, young terrier people, um, who, as a child, wa was the, the protege of Reg Gadsden, who was a great Scotty breeder, a wonderful judge, and, and a very good friend to both of us, yes, wouldn't you think? Absolutely. He started with, with Reg's foundation stock, um, even though his kennel name was established in his own right. But he's, he's effectively um, second generation. Absolutely. And he never keeps more than five, you know. No, 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 no. It's not a big kennel. Now, before we step onto the podium and find out more about our top three dogs of the year, let's go over to the NEC for the final championship show of 2012, Ladies Kennel Association, to see the winner of the last top honour available this year. Commentary is from Keith Young, and giving you all the facts is Simon Bailey. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome best in show judge, Ken Sinclair. First in is the Irish Wolfhound, followed by the Gordon Setter, the Alaskan Malamute, the Akita, the Belgian Shepherd Dog Tiburon, the West Highland White Terrier, and the smooth coated Chihuahua. Mr. Sinclair is now looking at the Irish Wolfhound, the winner of the Hound Group earlier today under Keith Thornton. The Irish Wolfhound, number 10764. Shepherd Dog Tiburon 
number 3719. On the table now is the West Highland White Terrier. Won the Terrier Group earlier on today under Bill Brown Cole. And it is a dog, and its number is 7202. The West Highland White Terrier, number 7202. On the table now is the smooth-coated Chihuahua, the final dog to be judged at this year's LKA. It was the winner of the toy group yesterday under Terry Nethercott. It is a bitch and its number is 643. The smooth-coated Chihuahua, number 643. in show from an entry of 11,297 dogs entered here at LKA and it is the Gordon Setter number 7558 and our reserve best in show goes to the Irish Wolfhound number 10764 would you show your appreciation to those of the group winners leaving the ring, please, ladies and gentlemen? Best in show, LKA. Reserve best in show, the Irish Wolfhound. So our next group is the Gun Dogs, and it's been a bit of a two-horse race. We've seen four different dogs take a best in show at general championship shows this year, Andrew. Um, a couple of these big winners were English Springers. Oh, was that a pun, two-horse race, <laughs> with that <laughs> Swedish English Springer that went best in show at Southern Counties, whose mm -hmm. name is Barreto Hold Your Horses at Peas Blossom. Yeah, I see. And of course the other one is that marvellous evergreen bitch that won at Midland Counties, the lovely Trimere Tigra, um, who I think it must be five years ago that I made a best in show at the Welsh Kennel Club. And she's just, well, she won under Anne Ingram, so how good has she got to be to do that? 
Um, and she just moves effortlessly, you know, like a two-year-old. Yeah, but she's obviously not two. She's no, no, she's a, she's, a, she's, a, she's in veteran yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. One of the other best in show winners that I mentioned earlier was actually a pointer show champion, Kiswahili Martin at Canucks, that I believe won at Scottish Kennel Club early in the year. Yeah, and and of course he's not the only pointer to have won a group this year. Um, the one I remember um, towards the end of the season. Um, was at South Wales, um, when that lovely young bitch, Will Cremain, Ice Maiden, she's a very, very classy bitch. And, and again, you know, we seem to be talking more and more these days about talented young people yes. in the sport, for which yeah. we should be duly grateful. Um, and this young lady, Amelia Siddle, um, who's obviously born into it, I think the parents had pointers before, um, a very, very talented artist. Um, and now she's winning extremely well with, with uh, the, the two little sisters. Both were finalists at the Pup of the Year. That's right. Um, and um, now this Ice Maiden bitch, who, I, I mean, I, I loved her. Oh. But she's, and she's another of those go around dogs. You know, when you see, and that tail lashing. Yeah. You know, Di said earlier on when she was talking about the Bouviers, how dogs have to encapsulate the essence of the breed. And this young pointer bitch, when she goes around, she just screams pointer. You know, this is what we want. Yeah. And the handler has the knack of knowing the optimum speed for her animal. That's, that's always. Yeah. And she doesn't I, rush around. No, I'd like to mention a couple of American cockers I've seen this year. Mm -hmm. um, a black called Pearls a Singer. I think they're Afterglow. Afterglow they're Pearls a Singer. She was at the, we watched her at the Champion Stakes. What a mover. Yeah. I, think, um, I think there's a couple of American cockers that can make the going tough next year. Gadsby himself, Jason, they've got a young... Um, Tricolor dog? Yeah, called something like Dragon Quest. Um, I think oh, that's going to be in the final of the Pup of the Year, I believe. Well, he, he's taken my breath away a couple of times I've seen him. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there's some... Uh, Afterglow's produced consistently good American cockers as well as good standard poodles. And well, they've been doing it long enough. Yeah, they should do. Yeah. We must never underestimate the strength of British breeders. We still have some great breeders. But our top two dogs in the gun dog group this year are the Irish Water Spaniel, uh, Merlin, and the Labrador called Salty, who have finished third and sixth respectively in the top dog table. So I suppose a pretty good showing for the gun dogs, I suppose you could say. Or you could say a pretty good showing for American imports. Ah, yes. The, um, the Irish Water Spaniel came out at um, Welks, I think, last year with um, Judith Carruthers, who'd seen him as a youngster over there. Whistle Stop, Elements of Magic, mm -hmm. I think he's called in full. Yeah. But everyone knows him as Merlin the Magician, mm -hmm. for obvious reasons. Um, and um, he was one of those that sort of came out and won big straight off. Um, and then Salty Dog is completely at the other end of the scale. Here's the dog who had been shown in, in America and Canada He'd won a lot. He'd won best of breed at um, Westminster, where the judge was Valerie Foss, quite some years ago. Um, and, and he was basically sort of about to lapse into retirement. And then um, his owner, Linda Hess, agreed that he should come over here to Anthony Allen, who had seen him in the States, I believe. And um, I mean, I saw the dog in America. I, I judged him, and he, he won best of breed under me when, when he was like two years old. And I have to say, hand on heart, I think the dog now is 10 times the dog he was then. Oh, right. He seems to, you know, it's a, it's a, some breeds take time to develop. Yeah. And some dogs look better with the bloom of maturity yeah. on them. Mm. Especially a lab. Yes. Mm. You yes. don't want a rakish young exactly. Labrador. Mm. Exactly. And that dog is solid, all dog. And I've, I feel when we learned about labs with Gwen Broadley, she, she showed us dogs like that. Gwen would have liked this. Yes, dog. I feel. Well, we watched him at the Champion Stakes finals, and I thought he was he was bang on for. Yeah, I saw him first last year at Darlington. Mariel Hathaway, your mm -hmm. friend, she yeah. gave him a Champion Stakes, and I thought, oh, and I looked him up. I liked him so much. Yeah, yeah he's a dog I admire, and really getting on. He must mm. be seven or eight, I think. Well, last year Merlin actually finished fifth in the top dog tables, so he's taken a couple of steps up to finish in the podium places this year. And we spoke to Judith Carruthers about Merlin's successful 2012 season. So we spoke to you this time last year in 2011 when you finished in the top 10 all breeds last year. Mm -hmm. 
you finished third this year, Top Gun Dog again. How does it feel now? It feels um, hard to believe, really, um, for a, a, a vulnerable native, one of the na vulnerable native breeds. Um, we don't have many sets of CCs here. We don't have many classes for the breed. Um, it's just incredible, and it, it was something that you know we never set out to do. We never set out to be top gun dog or top anything really. So it's just it's amazing, totally amazing. And we've seen you on uh, the the front of the the papers a lot this year, a lot of winning. Can you pick out something this year that that you would pick out as your highlight? Yeah, I think it was probably. Um, Gundog Breeds of Scotland actually, although it wasn't, it was a group show and it's not one of the, the biggest shows, it was, it was like the culmination of 18 months of, you know, an incredible journey really. And also I felt that it was Merlin's last show of 2012 um, and to have two years as Top Gundog I felt, you know, it was just an amazing achievement and it was quite an emotional time. It was his second year um, best in show at Gundog Breeds of Scotland and it was it was fantastic. It was also a, rel a relief because I knew that we were going to have a few months off um, and catch up and enjoy normal life again. So that's, as you say, that's been two years. What are the plans for Maryland next year? Well, he's not certainly not retired. He's only three, so we'll you know we'll keep showing him. He loves showing, um, so we'll keep we'll keep showing him. But probably not quite as much as uh, as we have been. It's really hard work to campaign a dog, um, and living where we do, we're we're a long way from uh, the majority of shows. So it takes a lot of time and effort, and. What I would like to say is for those people who think that these things can only be achieved by other people, you know, they can be. If you put the work in and put the work into your dog, then it can happen to anybody as long as the dog is good enough. And in this Olympic year, we now move into the silver medal position and a dog that has stolen the hearts of many, including our experts today, as we heard earlier. Champion Vanatonia you'll see, has a formidable record of five best-in-shows and two reserve best-in-shows over the course of 2012. A CV like that in many years would see a dog take top honours. He really has had a brilliant year, hasn't he, guys? Yep, and it's over now. <laughs> They're not going to show him again. He's had his year, and they've got a pretty a couple of very good clumbers they're excited about to show next year. Mm. So I think Graham's going to put his paws up. And can you just talk a little bit, or why don't you talk a little bit about the amount of grooming that goes into um, such a delicate little breed like uh, a toy poodle? They're not, they're not delicate. That's the greatest misconception about mm. poodles. This is a working water-retrieving dog that has a particular kind of coat um, that doesn't shed, uh, and because of its very adaptable character, it's become an, an ideal companion breed. Obviously, the, the smaller sizes, the miniature and the toy, have been bred down from the original standard poodle, which was a, it, I mean, the, you, could, you can talk about history for hours and hours, but um, it, it is claimed, quite understandably, that there's a common ancestry way back between the, behind the standard poodle and the Portuguese water dog and various other, um, even the Irish water spaniel, there's probably a link there somewhere way, way back. But no, they're not, um, they're not precious little dogs. They're sturdy, tough dogs, you know, the great agility dogs, um, wonderful in water. If you actually see a, a poodle in water, they are fabulous. But the coat, as you said, it, if, if it's going to be a show poodle, then yeah, there the, they're are the um, traditional styles, the traditional clips that must be adhered to. And, and yeah, of course it takes hours of dedication and, and, and a skill. But if you're going to have poodles, then you do have to be dedicated to the art of, of coat presentation. And I think they are. I think they love it. It's, it's their way of life. That sense why he's, he's, he's and it's a challenge, you see, because you, know, the, you, you can do so much. You can create an illusion. 
you can have a poodle that has a completely straight back end, but if it's cleverly trimmed, mm. it'll fool 75% of the judges because they'll just go by what they see rather than what they feel. Mm, they can really manufacture hocks. Oh, God, poodle, absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, and actually, yet again, um, Graham is a dog that finished last year in ninth on the top dogs all breeds list with three best in shows, mm. even. Um, so, does that tell us anything at all about these dogs' campaigns? Well, I think you know you've got to, you've got to look at things in context in this country. Um, our, our we have approximately twenty five general championship shows a year. Most dogs in this country would probably go to two shows a month. And in the height of the season, obviously, then it'll get a little bit more intense. But you cannot compare campaigning a show dog in this country um, with showing a dog in the United States or campaigning a dog in the United States. I was in conversation just a few days ago with a very good friend of mine in Spain who was considering sending a, a bitch of his to the United States to be campaigned. And the handler he's actually discussing it with goes to 165 shows a year. Now, I mean, can you get your head around that? Wow. So our dogs, they might seem to have a busy summer, mm. but really, I mean, it's, it's, it's not as intense a campaign as a lot of people would imagine. And of course, Maureen, to become a top dog, the dog has to love what they're doing and they have to have a rapport with their handler. The two of them work as a team. You see that all the time. I mean, Gadsby has a knack, whatever he takes in. Sickening Dave Killerly. I mean, whatever Akita he takes in, he just has that rapport with. They are, yes, we were good handlers, were we, Andrew? You speak for yourself. No, you weren't. <laughs> you had a husband to do it. <laughs> I just used to get a little bit agitated sometimes. Well, uh, go redder and redder, I remember. <laughs> I, did, I did reasonably well, thank did you. Did break the record, yes, with a big mm. Well, we managed to speak to Graham's owners, Lee Cox and Tom Ishwood, about their fantastic year with Graham. Congratulations, Ian Tom. With Graham, you finished 2012 top utility and uh, runner-up top dog all breeds. You must be really happy. Thrilled, absolutely thrilled. It's been a fabulous year. Um, I mean, we were top dog all breeds in 2010, and to be runner-up top dog in 2012 is just amazing. It's unbelievable. I mean, to talk us through the year, because I mean, Graham did some great things at the end of 2011, and then sort of came into 2012 on a roll. Yeah, he has. I mean, he's he's been on fire, and you know, he's been looking good. And 2000, and the end of last year, he was uh, so it's just starting to knock on, the, on knock on the door. And this year, he seems to have been a really, really good year. I mean, obviously, I've been judging quite a bit as well, so he hasn't been at every show. But um, no, he's had a fabulous, fabulous year. Really, really pleased. And as you say, you top dog all breeds in 2010. You finished in the top ten. You're in the top two this year. What's the Vanatonia secret, Tom? Uh, hard work really, hard work and a bit of luck. Um, a lot of luck, yeah. yeah, a lot of luck. But sure you make your own luck? Well that, yeah, it depends on what you, what you think about it really. I mean, yeah, definitely, uh, yeah, you, you've got to put the work in. I mean, you just can't expect to do it, you've got to put the work in and, and it's dedication, but there's always a certain amount of luck. Involved. Well, okay, congratulations for 2012 and anything exciting coming in 2013? Because Graham's now retired, I think, yes, hasn't he? Has. Yeah, he's retired. He retired last week at Buba, well, from breed competition. And um, we've got some youngsters and, you know, we want to play with, play with something, something else and uh, we need a rest. <laughs> Summer, I suspect, will end up talking to you quite a lot next year as well. Thank you both. Thanks a lot. So behind Graham in the top utility table is the Dalmatian, owned by Jenny Alexander, champion Offerdell Chevalier. Um, tell us a little bit about, about this, because it's quite an interesting story behind this, isn't it? Well, basically, um, Chevalier's breeder, um, Jenny Alexander, uh, decided that the stud dog that she particularly wanted to use on a bitch uh, was a dog that was living in Norway. Jenny drove all the way to Norway with an in-season bitch. Uh, got the bitch mated. Uh, the bitch duly whelped a litter. And in that litter was not only Chevalier, but also a, a, a bitch that became a champion called Sapphire. 
uh, both of whom actually qualified for the champion stakes, the Yukon Uber champion stakes that uh, we saw in the previous program. Mm -hmm. So this Dalmatian that Andrew you've just been talking about, Chevalier, oh, yeah. um, it actually went best in show at Booba mm -hmm. at the end of the year, which is a big utility breed championship show, and beat the almighty Graham. And they're <laughs> in, all there to be beaten. Yeah, they are, absolutely. But I believe, Di, you wanted to mention a particular bulldog that some you. Well, all I do now is watch, as you know. I'm a ringside. Um, and we love to see consistency. At a local show, just an open show, early on in the year, I saw a bulldog puppy. That bulldog puppy, during his puppy and junior classes, he was entered at seven shows, got seven best of breeds, and twice was shortlisted or placed in groups. This is a strong kennel, the King Rock Kennel, been breeding for 30 years, and I've known them have 30, 40 champions. For someone like me, the, the admiration we feel for a kennel as strong as that, and a, a watch a puppy do that sort of winning, that's I, a thrill. I can't ever remember anything debuting like that in any breed. No, there was that Akita you found as a baby that went on to get six tickets in Puppy and only just at Booba could claim his title with his seventh ticket. It was a Red Witch, yeah. A Red Witch. Mm -hmm. What consistency there. That's a kennel to admire, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they've, they've been placed and won groups with, you gave one a best in show. Southern Counties, yeah. What? We do have some talented breeders in this country. We really do, don't we? But, but the thing is, with your bulldog, Chris and Graham are the kind of people that probably wouldn't even mention it. Oh, no. No, they do hide <laughs> their right under it, yes. Very modest Yes, they chaps. are. And they I suppose are. it doesn't. you don't necessarily have to get in the group placings at every championship show to show these amazing accolades, because it's happening in the breed, like you're saying. Yeah. In this yeah. But the, the, the other important thing that you, you've not really emphasized with with Chris and Graham is the fact that um, they are showing one of like the Pekingese a high profile breed mm -hmm. and they've taken this whole health thing extremely yes, responsibly very responsibly and I remember the first time I saw the dog that you're talking about was when um, I think it was at the city of Birmingham and they said you know we'd, we'd like you to come and have a look at this because this is what we think now this is the modern bulldog. This mm. fits the breed standard, but still looks like a bulldog. Fit, healthy, passed all, passed all its vet checks, and mm. and uh, you know they've done an amazing yeah. job. Yeah, at, uh, they've passed every check. In I just wish vets would really appreciate oh. what breeders do yeah. for pedigree dogs. Yes, I wish the kennel club one more support. Look what Phil has done with his basset. Yes, changed yeah. the way he thinks. Yeah. breeding yeah. A, a slightly different yeah. look. But drier, in fact, healthier. Uh, I live close to the King Rock boys, so I see their stock. If you look through their old photographs, their champions of 30 years ago look very much like the ones yeah, of today. Of course, yeah. Mm. The really good ones were not that exciting. And I can remember going to George and Dora Wakefield when Carl and I were very young and they were all galloping and healthy. And this, this whole question of exaggeration is much more a question of perception than reality. And finally, we come to our top dog for 2012. Her brilliant year has seen her collect five All Breeds Best in Shows, two Reserve Best in Show, two Best in Show at Hound Group Shows, 16 Group Wins and 15 CCs. A staggering record for an incredible dog. The Dog World Arden Grange Top Dog for 2012 is Champion Soul Trader Peekaboo, the Petit Basic Griffon Bondion. And the winner of Best in Show at the Hound Show 2012 is the Petit. Number 257. The winner of Best in Show Welsh Kennel Club 2012 is the Petit Basset Griffon Von Champion sole trader Peekaboo. So sorry, you've had uh, quite an incredible 2012. Um, can you pick out a highlight from this year? Extremely difficult because we have had such an amazing year, whether it be in this country or Europe, America. So it's really hard to, to pick something out. 
but probably really to start the year it probably would have to be Crofts. Extremely stressful show, but obviously turned out fantastic in the end with Gillygate and Best Debris for the second year running. So, um, and then really kick-started our year off to be such an amazing year. Unbelievable. And uh, what are your plans for Gilly in 2013? Bless her, she's going to be retired. We we're retiring at, at Crofts, um, as we've mentioned, certainly around the show ring on numerous occasions. Being top dog this year, we just can't achieve that level with her again. She needs a rest as well. She's exhausted, bless her. So she's off now until Crofts, nothing for her now. Um, so hopefully for us and for Gilly, it's going to be a, a, a much quieter year. So um, maybe she'll have maternal duties, we don't know. Um, but certainly for us, we're going to take a bit of a rest and nowhere, not do it anywhere near as many shows as we've done this year. So we're tired as well. <laughs> we spoke to you at the end of 2011, where you finished Top Hound uh, yeah. with Gilly. Uh, you finished Top Hound again and Top Dog. You were astonished last year. What's the feeling this year? It's just mo mind blowing, really. It's just a, an absolute dream come true that we still think should happen to other people. Um, you know, we're extremely down to earth people um, and we still have people such as, you know, Jeff Corish, Michael Code. Um, it happens to, you know, Lee Cox, it happens to other people. It doesn't happen to us. It's, it's just, it is just mind blowing and just an absolute dream come true for both of us. Well, congratulations on a staggeringly good 2012. Thank you. Um, and good luck for 2013. Thank you very much. So, Andrew and I, Jilly basically got out of starting blocks this year with two best in shows, one at Boston and one at Manchester. And basically, she's never looked back, has she? Uh, richly deserved. This is rare. I don't think I've ever heard anybody say they don't like her. Oh, that's interesting. And you know, it's, it's, it's funny how things happen in, in the dog sport. I think um, in one of our interviews with Gavin and Sarah uh, towards the end of last year, it was kind of, well, you know, we'll probably take her to Crufts, you know, and she's at the right age, we'll maybe have a litter from her and then concentrate on some youngsters. There was never this, you know, sort of deliberate sort of campaign that, that was ever really sort of thought of in that much detail. And I think it, it kind of sort of crept up on them almost accidentally. Um, and I, I think one day, you know, the, Gavin, Sarah or whoever must have sort of had a long, hard look at this and thought, you know, we have actually got something special here, so we should, we should give her the next year. Mm. Uh, I mean, enough of us had been telling them that they got something yeah. special, of mm. course. Yeah. But I think it did actually sink in. And, and she's just, well, I mean, I've said so many times, you know, how much I, I rate this bitch. Um, I, I just got such, such a thrill out of watching her going around the ring when she's on form. And would you say that she's uh, she's clearly matured since the days we saw her win Reserve Best in Show at Craft? Well, she like came out of nowhere yeah. to get Reserve Best in Show. Well, at yes, Kraft shortly and, after and that, and the Dondina. Andrew gave her Best in Show at the Hound Show. Well, it was in the July. She'd got a few more months on her, in fairness. But she was still very young then. She was still young, but but you could but what yeah. she'd got it all together. She yeah. just needed to flesh Star quality. flesh the frame out a little bit. Yeah. But you see, again, like we said before, it's this you know this effortless movement, accuracy of footfall, you know, the minute they take off, they just, you know, they flow. She certainly has star quality, but you could also probably say as well that she's she's a naughty wee thing. She does play yeah. up Gav yeah. and she does play up Sarah, but it's lovely because that breed in particular, you know, they're not meant to stand like robots. They've got to have this cheeky, merry personality. And it was, it was very interesting, you know, I, w I was privy to a conversation when some uh, wealthy Americans were trying to, to get hold of, of Jilly for uh, maybe a year or two or something. And um, nothing, nothing was decided. Uh, however, it was interesting when Gavin said that she w she's not the sort of dog that you could actually keep in the house because he said she's, she's so, she, she gets bored so easily. When she's a kennel dog living with other dogs, Coming out and being with the family and going to shows is, is an adventure and it's fun. But he said, I know if we brought her in the house, she'd lose that little bit of an edge, which, which is interesting. It is, it is. Because it works, you know, th th there are no rules with these great show dogs. 
some dogs blossom when they're kept as a, as a house dog. Um, my, my own beagles were never kennel dogs. They always lived in the house with me. Um, so, you know, it all, it's all about the individual and, and, and their particular temperament and character. And she's completely dominated the hound group this year. I mean, mm, there's, there's pretty much no other dogs that can have touched her, obviously, clearly. Mm. Um, but there's not really any... Uh, it's been an open field, the rest of the hound group as well. Jilly's mm. been at the top, mm. and then everyone else has kind mm. of... Yeah. Had the scraps, I suppose. I mean, normally, you know, the, the, you get a dachshund or two, or a beagle, or a, an Afghan, uh, or a whippet. Um, but this year, well, we did see the whippet, the, the Swedish whippet. Yes. Um, yeah. Won a, a hound group. Yes. It won the group at City of Birmingham, yes. and uh, Jilly was second to that. Wasn't that's it? right, and yeah. and Duquesne Sinclair. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, no, I mean, as far as the group's concerned, um, Jilly's actually really had it very yeah. much her own yeah. way. As long yes. as we make it short, we're not, we're not saying the group was not strong. We're no. saying Jilly was stronger. Yes. Yeah. There were plenty in that group that were, would have been worthy group winners. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Well, that's a fitting place to end. We have wrapped up all of our group winners. So here is how the final placings look. As we have seen, Jilly is out in front, followed by our utility group winner, the Toy Poodle Graham, and the Irish Water Spaniel Merlin. Next up, our top toy, Eric the Pekingese, and our Terrier group winner, the Norwich, Paris in fifth. Another toy is next, the Smooth Coated Chihuahua Champion Copy Mare Celebration, and the Labrador called Salty, and our second Terrier, the Irish Terrier Fleet Street Fire and Ice. And wrapping up our top 10 is the Dalmatian champion Offredale Chevalier and the King Charles maybe Theo in 10th. So that just about wraps things up from us. We've got our top dog and our top 10 all breeds. Thank you very much to Andrew, to Di. And we'll see you next time on Around the Dog World for the Pup of the Year final. And we'll take a quick look ahead to Crufts 2013.